Hi everyone, I'm Andre. Welcome to Bringing Brookfield Zoo to you. Snakes, spooky or special? Snakes look and act very different than many other animals, which makes them misunderstood. Our animal care professionals are going to help balance the scales as we explore snakes. My name's Craig. I'm an animal care specialist here at the Hamill Play Zoo, Wild Encounters, and our ambassador program. Today I'd like to introduce you to some of my favorite types of animals, some of our ambassadors, snakes. So we're, over here we're going to start with animal care specialist Manelia, and she's got one of our baby corn snakes. So making his or her debut, this is sword, sword, like the weapon, I know. Um, <laughs> She's about, she or she is about a year and a half now. Next to me is one of our biggest boys. This is with Jill and Olivia. This is our Burmese Python Atticus. And he's approximately nine to 10 years old. Still got some growing to do. Over here with Francine, we have our Kenyan sand boa lasagna. Um, named because she has this nice, looks like the top layer of a lasagna. Very delicious, right? Mm -hmm. And then, lastly, you may all know Scott <laughs> and uh, Casper, of course, our leucistic ball python. So today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some similarities and differences between these guys. While, yes, they're all snakes, all different types of snakes, they have a lot of really cool and different features as well. So some of the main things you'll know about snakes, yes, they're reptiles, so they're covered in scales. Um, they lay eggs, although there will be some uh, contra contradictions to that, which we can discuss. And um, they're all cold-blooded, mainly. Again, there's, there's a few outliers there too, but cold-blooded, so they don't regulate their own body temperature. They uh, depend on the environment around them. We'll determine what their body temperature is. Um, again, another common thing with snakes, how they move. Of course, they don't have arms and legs. So they slither around on the ground or are climbing up in trees. They use those scales, especially on the underside, which you can see a good look of Atticus's scales here um, to get around. And if you're watching Atticus a little closely, he might stick out his tongue. So that's how, primarily how snakes will find their food. They use their tongue to smell. Um, they bring those scent particles back into their mouth. They have an organ called the Jacobson's organ that processes the smells that they are collecting. Um, again, uh, they don't have ears, at least in the sense that you would think of. They do have these structures for like an inner ear, so they um, can feel vibrations in the ground, and that's kind of how they can quote unquote hear things. Looks like uh, Olivia's struggling to hang on to Atticus <laughs> over here. Sorry, I think I scared him a little. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he's heavy. He's, he's about big. 50 pounds now. He's not even full grown yet. He's going to keep going. So those are some of the, you know, common snake things that, uh, you know, most people know. So to now to talk about some of the differences, we're going to start over here with Sword, our, our little baby corn snake here. So uh, these guys are pretty common. You can find them um, in rural areas uh, across the U.S., they're really cool actually to have around, similar to like garter snakes and stuff like that. They're um, good at catching prey uh, and we want them around because they are a good natural pest control. But they also make uh, pretty popular pets too. So you see these guys pretty commonly. Um, they're pretty, pretty docile animals, uh, especially if you handle them enough. We've been handling our babies here since uh, they were born. Uh, after we got them eating properly, of course, and they were born around June in 2019. So they're about a year and a half old. And these guys can live 15, 20 so years uh, under professional care. Why are they called corn snakes? They're called corn snakes. Well, they have a couple different things. You can tend to find them a lot in corn fields. They do, they're good natural pest control. They like to eat the mice and stuff that will eat crops. Uh, but if you look underneath too, um, you see like the the coloration yeah. there it kind of looks like maize or corn yeah. right so you can see he he or she's kind of we don't know the sex yet he or she's kind of checking stuff out um using that tongue flicking and uh you know just exploring and again very calm while she is active i'm probably going to keep saying she but while she's active because she's cute uh she will be using her tongue just to 
you know, check everything out. Um, but she's not nervous, you can tell. Um, a corn snake, they have this neat ability to, uh, when they're nervous or when they sense predators, they'll flick their tails, um, especially like in leaves or something, to make a rattly sound to try and scare off predators. It's a type of mimicry. Um, but you can see she's calm. She's just slowly moving around and just exploring. Now over here, on the opposite end, we have our Burmese python. This is Atticus. So again, I told you he's not full grown. He's just about 10, he just measured in at 10 feet long, about 50 pounds. He's probably going to gain a few more feet or so when he hits full grown. But when I started here about six years ago, he was probably a little bit longer than an adult corn snake, a little, a little bit uh, thicker because he was a little guy. Um, again, we do a lot of handling with him. So he's very, you might hear him hissing a little bit. That's actually pr mostly just him breathing out, uh, especially since we're supporting a lot of his weight. Um, as they get bigger, they're not really uh, into climbing anymore. They tend to sit on the ground a lot. Um, but he's still in between. He's still size-wise uh, a little bit adolescent. So he will, he's still pretty active and he does a lot of climbing. But we handle him frequently so that he's, you know, easy to work with. Um, he's not afraid of us. We're not afraid of him. He's comfortable being picked up. He does take multiple keepers to safely carry him now. Um, so these guys uh, on the opposite end, like I was talking about with the corn snake, um, are pretty popular as far as pets go too, because they're pretty, pretty chill. Um, they're impressive animals. And when you get them when they're young, they're, um, they're, they're small and they're easy to work with. But what people don't realize is how big these guys will actually get and the level of care that it takes um, to take care of these guys, whether it's feeding or having a proper enclosure. Um, light bulbs for <laughs> reptiles can be expensive, all of that stuff. So these guys aren't recommended as, as uh, pets just because, you know, it, people don't know what they're getting into when they buy them and snakes start out really, really small and adorable. Not saying that he's not cute because look at that little face. Um, but again, uh, if you were wanting to, you know, purchase a snake as a pet or adopt a snake, something like a corn snake, or even uh, cat, like Casper, a ball python, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, would be a little bit better option. And so what happens too though, um, I'm sure you've heard, these guys are not naturally from the United States at all. They're from uh, Myanmar area. But uh, these guys are pretty prevalent right now in, in Florida, like in the Everglades, and that's because people will get these things when they're small and easy to handle, and then when they can't take care of them anymore, they've been releasing them. So that's an invasive species now, and with no natural predators, these guys were able to thrive and reproduce. And as you can see, he's a pretty big animal here, and they say that uh, the snake can handle a prey about the size of the thickest part of its body. So right now this guy could eat like rabbits, um, potentially small dogs and cats, but as they get bigger they've been known to handle you know much bigger animals too, which wouldn't be their normal part of their diet in Florida. So. Mm. What's your favorite snake fact? Snake fact. That's tricky. I could talk about snakes all day, so I always have to, when I do a snake chat, I have to come up with a theme so that I limit it to certain things and then I answer <laughs> questions later. Um, brumation. Brumation. <laughs> Brumation's cool. It's like a type of hibernation that they'll go into. And we actually had to, in order, because we bred our corn snakes here, that's where we got these babies. And um, like I said before, uh, snakes will do certain things based off of um, uh, season. And while our animals are kept in a controlled space, they don't, some of these things they don't really pick up on. And so in order for us to have bred these corn snakes, we wanted to put them into a brumation, um, which is like a type of hibernation. And so um, we set up new enclosures where we reduce the heat a little bit to kind of force them to um, slow down. We change their light cycles drastically and that kind of put them into that, that brumation period so that when they woke up, we can start feeding them and get them ready for a breeding season. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you guys learned a lot about snakes. They're one of my favorite animals. And we hope that you come visit us as soon as everything's opened up and get to see all of our cool guys here. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, have a good day.
Have you ever wondered how it might feel to be a snake, or at least sense your world like one? Let's see what Jenny's up to at the play zoo. I bet Jenny has some great ideas. Hello, play zoo friends. My name is Jenny. Thanks for joining us for the Hamill Family Play Zoo video series, bringing the play zoo to you. Today, we will investigate an animal that some people think is spooky, but we will find out why this spooky animal is actually super cool. Let's go. Sometimes the way an animal looks or smells or sounds or the way it moves can make it seem scary or yucky, but we can face our fears by investigating these spooky animals. We can discover how the things that make animals different also make them super cool. Can you guess which spooky animal we'll be investigating? Snakes look different from other animals. They have long, narrow bodies. Their bodies are not covered in fur or feathers. They are covered in scales. Snakes can have scales of all different colors and patterns. Sometimes snake colors are camouflage. They help them blend into their surroundings. Other times, snake colors help them stand out. Let's explore how a snake looks. We can use our nature dough and our nature treasures to help us investigate. When we roll our nature dough into a snake shape, we can feel what the bodies of snakes are like. They are long and round and narrow. We can use our nature treasures or other tools to make patterns in our snake, like snake scales. What kinds of patterns does your snake have? If you don't have nature dough, or if you wanna try something else, we can use our imagination to investigate what it's like to be a snake. Can you make your body long and narrow? What colors do you want your snake body to be? How do snakes move from place to place without any legs or wings or fins? Snakes have strong muscles all along their bodies. They use their muscles to slither along the ground. Some snakes even swim in water or climb high into trees. Snakes can use their strong muscles to move very fast to catch their food or to hold on tight to their food or to tree branches. Snakes are so strong. We can use our snake sculpture to investigate how snakes move. We can make our snake slither on the ground. We can make our snake wrap itself around a tree branch. It's amazing how snakes can move, even with no legs or wings or fins. Now, use your imagination to investigate what it's like to move like a snake. Can you slither on the ground? Can you squeeze your muscles to hold on tight? Give it a try. There's another thing that makes snakes different from other animals. Snakes use their tongues to smell instead of their noses. When you see a snake sticking out its tongue, you know it is smelling its surroundings. Imagine if you could smell with your tongue. Wouldn't that be cool? Can you stick out your tongue like a snake? That was fun. Snakes aren't spooky at all. They are super different and super cool. Do you have pictures of your nature doll sculptures or of yourself imagining to be an animal? We'd love to see them. Send them to the address on your screen. See you next time. We think snakes are very different looking and very special. How about you? We hope to see you next time on Bringing Brookfield Zoo to you.